Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fine Arts, the Student Experience. My name's Erin. I'm just the facilitator tonight getting you started. Um, we have a great panel of experts here to talk with you tonight and just a couple of housekeeping bits. Um, your mic is muted and your camera is off, so you can only see the panelists. Um, but you can interact by using the Q&A button to ask any and all questions that you have. They may not get to all of your questions, but the panelists will have um, a transcript of who's registered and the questions you've asked, so they're able to reach out perhaps even after the session. Um, just a couple of reminders too, there are more sessions going on over the next few weeks, so we encourage you to go to the moacac.org website and check those out, and that website is also where recording of this session um, and all of the sessions through the weeks. Okay, turning it over to our panelists. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. I'm just going to kick this off. My name is Jenny and I am an Assistant Director of Admissions at Fompon University. Throughout this presentation, you'll learn what the fine arts are, the differences between various programs, opportunities for students within the fine arts realm, and what they look like at Bonbon specifically. And then I'll turn it over to our other panelists to talk about their universities. So what do you know about Bonbon? Bonbon is a small private Catholic liberal arts school located in Clayton, Missouri, which is right outside of the St. Louis city. We have about 1200 students. We actually proudly boast a 10 to one student to faculty ratio, meaning for every 10 students, there is one professor. Uh, we also have 40 plus majors and we are division three for our athletics. Okay, so you may have heard this before, but I'm just here to demystify the process a little bit. Uh, what is a BFA and what is a BA? So a BA or a Bachelor in Arts degree is general. There's no concentration and a lot of the times this pairs well with teacher certification. Uh, students who pursue this route do not want a specific art degree. A lot of the time they'll want to do this to either become certified teachers, work in nonprofit, or become an art curator. A BFA or a Bachelor in Fine Arts degree is specific. It actually has a concentration. It requires an extra 15 or more credits. And it is the groundwork for an MFA, an MFA program or a Master's in Fine Arts. Uh, BFA programs are more challenging and they're uh, also the most prestigious degree you can receive in visual arts at the undergraduate level. At Bonbon, we also offer both an MFA and a regular master in arts degree. So at Bonbon, these are our concentrations. So we offer photography, graphic design, painting, ceramics, drawing, sculpture, and figurative studies. We also offer some certificate programs in both web design and development and art therapy. Uh, so these are specifically for students who are going into that BFA route. So again, that's the Bachelor in Fine Arts degree. Uh, Fonbon has a prestigious reputation. We're in the top 100 universities in the country for figurative studies. And I just want to point out that unfortunately, we do not have printmaking or theater and performing arts, and our program is not a contemporary program. All right. So some courses um, that you'll see at Fonbon, so again, our program is focused on figurative studies, would be like anatomy for artists, life-size drawing, anatomy for drawing, crochet, and life-sized painting. Okay, so I just want to brag a little bit about our instructor. So we are very blessed that we have faculty who've been with Fonbon for a long time, and they're actually all working artists. So just to brag a little bit more about them, Victor Wang consistently ranks in the top 100 for figurative artists. Tim Liddy has his art in one of the most prestigious art museums, which is the Crystal Bridges Museum of Art. Mark Douglas shows nationally, and Tony Borchardt presents at art conferences and has his work featured often. Okay, so specifically again, what does it look like at Fontbonne for a fine arts degree? So we have academy style classes and 
You may never have heard of this before, but this means that beginner, intermediate, advanced, and graduate uh, students are all in the same space at the same time, taking different levels of those courses. So for example, you might have life-size drawing, but you'll have a sophomore student who's taking the 200 level course and a senior student taking the 400 level version. And they're both taking the class at the same time with the same instruction. However, they have totally different standards. They're being critiqued differently, um, but they're still able to have that instruction and bounce ideas off of each other. And a lot of the times um, students are able to either learn from the upperclassmen students or pass down their knowledge. Uh, we also have small class sizes. So um, at Fompon, we do only have 1,200 students, as I said before, and typically those classes are capped at 25. But in the arts courses, they're always capped at 15. And even with COVID-19, we've made even more restrictions. And so now we have our, um, our classes are capped at eight students. Uh, so our studio classes are two plus hours. And then we also have live models for courses, which not a lot of universities offer. Undergraduate students are also allowed to go in whenever the, our buildings are open. And graduate students have private studio space. Undergraduate students also get to spend five plus hours a week in the studio with one of our professional working artists slash professors. And Fompon has an emphasis on problem solving. Professors are flexible and have an open door policy for all of our students. So I just want to talk a little bit about the facilities that we have. Um, so we have a fine arts gallery where we host frequent shows right over here. Uh, we have about eight exhibits a year. We'll host visiting artists, have workshops, artist talks, and even do student shows there. We have a brand new kiln. We have a welding room, a wood shop that the fine arts department actually received a large grant to make to true artisan level. And it may not be pictured here, but we actually have a Mac lab with Adobe Suite included on all computers for our graphic design students. We have a photography studio, a dark room, lighting equipment, and a photography printer for our photography students. And we're actually the only school in the St. Louis region with a bronze foundry. All right, so we are in a great area. We're in the St. Louis area and we have so much to offer as far as the arts. Uh, we have Art St. Louis Gallery and they actually invite two fine arts students to showcase there. We have the St. Louis Artist Guild, the St. Louis Art Museum, the Contemporary Museum, the Pulitzer Museum, Herb Arts, and the Third Degree Glass Blowing Factory. Just to name a few, there are so much more. Um, so students are encouraged to obtain internships. Uh, currently, they're finding them both in the St. Louis area. And a lot of students I've talked to within the fine arts program have actually found remote internships, which I think is especially important during COVID. Like our students are pursuing internships in the LA area or in New York City. And what they're doing is they're meeting with their bosses virtually over Zoom or Skype or another platform. And they're still able to do weekly check-ins and do their work and receive credit and a little bit of notoriety too, because they're doing work for these institutions and getting their name out there. So if you liked what I've said during our presentation, then please go ahead and apply for Fompon. It's a completely free application that's on our website. It only takes about 10 minutes. We do want your official high school transcripts and SAT or ACT scores. However, I do want to point out I've been speaking to a lot of you and you've been saying, I've rescheduled the ACT four times and I still can't get in. And we understand that. So we've actually gone test optional temporarily for the upcoming school year. So what we'll do is we'll look at your weighted GPA. We'll look at your courses and how rigorous they are. Um, especially if you've got a lot of honors and AP courses, and we'll base our admission decision off of that. And if we need a little bit more information, you have the opportunity to brag about yourself, either through letters of recommendation or personal essay, just to round out your file. Um, in addition, we are rolling admissions. So that means between now and next summer, if you have interest in Fompon, you can apply and you can still receive an admission decision receive a great financial aid award, and then be able to enroll in classes by next fall. We offer two opportunities for visiting. You can either visit virtually or you can visit on campus. And when you do that, you can set up a visit with admissions, with coaches, 
and also with staff and faculty. So say if you want to meet with um, our accommodations coordinator or a faculty person in the specific program that you're interested, we can set that up. Um, and then lastly, if you wanted to make a decision, the big push for uh, the national deadline for colleges and universities is typically by May 1st. So I know everyone is anxious about hearing about financial aid. So I'm here to just demystify that process a little bit. So every single student who's admitted into FAMPAN actually receives a merit-based scholarship. And that scholarship ranges from 6,500 all the way up to 15,000. And that is before FAFSA. So we have some stackable aid that you can put on top of your merit-based scholarship. So you can actually put um, your A plus award. So if you're a Missouri resident and you're working on that in your high school, we do award you an additional $1,000. Uh, we give all graduates of Catholic high schools an additional $2,000. And because we're speaking about fine arts specifically, we do have a talent scholarship that is an additional $2,000 for students who qualify. Uh, to do that, we would just need a portfolio of approximately 12 pieces that demonstrate ability and potential. And then the fine arts department will select the recipients of that award and it will be on top of, again, your merit-based scholarship and any other stackable aid. And again, that's before you file FAFSA. So the FAFSA does open up on October 1st. You can actually put 10 schools on there. So you do not have to be married to FAMPON in order to file FAFSA and include us. So we all have an individual school code, every college and university. You just plug that on there. Again, 10 schools is what they accept and then if you're admitted to all 10 schools you will receive a financial aid award and you can go ahead and compare and see what the best offer is if there's still a gap so say you're looking at your out-of-pocket balance and you still don't think that that's affordable for you i do encourage you to seek for seek outside scholarships and this is the best time to do it a lot of people don't have the luxury of time but one thing COVID has done for some people is have a lot they have a lot more time on their hands and so i just want to highlight the scholarships that i've listed so the top two are fast web and unigo they are national databases for you to apply for scholarships so you can apply for scholarships for anything whether you're left-handed you're a uh, photographer or you have curly hair you can type in any of those things and what those websites will do is they will match you with scholarships that um, you could qualify for. So definitely go ahead and do that. Start writing some generic essays like why I am worthy of this scholarship or why I'm interested in the arts or whatever major that you decide on. Um, and then you'll be ready for whenever those deadlines do come up. The last three are Missouri specific. So we have the Scholarship Foundation of St. Louis, which offers both private scholarships and interest-free loans. My Scholarship Central, which is a database for the Missouri area. And then we also have the Missouri Scholarship and Loan Foundation. And again, those last three are Missouri specific. I do encourage you to create accounts for that if you're a Missouri resident too, to see if you can qualify for any additional aid. And that can even go towards textbooks or transportation or any other educational expense beyond just your tuition and room and board. So, okay, so I just want to thank you all for your time at this point. Um, and I would like to turn it over to Missouri Baptist. Thank you so much, Jenny. I love getting to learn about different universities. Each school has such different things and opportunities that it brings to the table. Um, and I'm so glad everybody's here. I can't see you, but I can imagine you guys. <laughs> um, and this is just exciting and fun. Um, so I'm Mary Kate. I'm from MBU and I love the fine arts. I actually have a music degree from MBU um, and so it is a passion of mine um, that students are interested in continuing in the arts. Um, I want to give you a general overview of MBU. Next slide. Um, so we are an evangelical Christian liberal arts institution. Um, that's one thing that makes us unique. Um, though we do hold to Christian values and our professors do and uh, that's just part of what makes us who we are. We don't require that our students make a profession of faith. Um, so you can 
believe what whatever it is you believe, but you're still welcome to be at MBU. Um, and we just challenge you to take this time and, and figure out what it is you believe and hopefully we can help you through that. Um, similar to Fontbonne, we have 1200 students, um, undergraduate main campus students on our campus. Um, and our student to faculty ratio is 19 to 1. We're located in West County, about 20 minutes west of St. Louis. Uh, and our core purpose is to teach, empower, and inspire students for services and lifelong learning. Uh, we were ranked number seven uh, by the Wall Street Journal for top universities for inspiration, actually inspiration by peers. Um, and that just goes to testify to the amazing students that we have that are continually inspiring one another um, and the staff, like our current students now, inspire me so much. Um, and I think our community at NBU is, is just a fantastic, wonderful, um, amazing thing that has blessed so many. Um, so I love talking about fine arts, but I wanted to have uh, our director of theater join us this evening. She actually recorded a little video which tells you more about our program. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Good evening and welcome to the Don and Mary Wainwright Pillsbury Performance Hall at Missouri Baptist University's Dale Williams Fine Arts Center. My name is Casey Cox and I'm the Director of Theater and Dance here at MBU. The Fine Arts program here at MBU is comprised of 15 majors ranging from worship arts technology to theater to music education. What makes MBU Fine Arts unique, however, is the way in which we lean into and apply the university's core values. First of all, and most importantly, we are serious and intentional about our Christian faith. You will find in MBU Fine Arts a cohort of professors that believe they are a Christian first and foremost and an artist second. Our biblical values undergird all of our work and our interactions with students, enriching it and giving it eternal purpose. We know that to separate our faith from our discipline is to not bring all of ourselves to the work. And so by focusing first on our beliefs, our artistry and work grows richer, deeper, and fuller. Next, we freely and responsibly search for truth. We believe that all truth is God's truth, and so all great and truthful works of art carry within them glimmers of God's redemptive plan. This core value speaks to Christians and non-Christians alike as we work together to research and create within universal truths. You will find this value clearly revealed in the MBU Media Talk, where our communications students interview such high-profile individuals as Bob Davidson from St. John's Mercy, Christina Coleman from Five on Your Side, and Missouri Governor Mike Parson. We strive for excellence. Artistry in music, theater, and dance is a calling worthy of intensive training and discipline. In your time at MBU, you will be immersed in opportunities to grow your art from the moment you set foot on campus. Our intimate program uh, allow faculty members to know you and your unique goals, enabling us to shape instruction and make specific connections between you and your desired profession. Our choral department, led by Dr. Jordan Cox, offers Chorale, our large choral ensemble, and Choral Society, our community choir. Chamber Singers, our audition touring choir, has performed at the Sing Conference and Winter Jam, as well as internationally in England, the Czech Republic, and Italy. Concert Band and Jazz Band, directed by Mr. Shane Williams, performs regularly in concerts and across campus at sporting events and special campus programs. MBU Ringers is our premier handbell ensemble, founded and led by Dr. Kathy Bitten, and has performed across the Midwest at churches, conventions, and conferences such as the Missouri Music Educators Association. Our worship program gives applied experiences through MBU Gospel Choir, Spirit Wing and Abide, our traveling ministry ensembles. Our opera theater ensemble meets year-round, and under the leadership of Dr. Jason Mallory, produces a full-length opera every spring semester and theater produces six main stage productions each year, in addition to multiple senior capstones, all of which are open to any MBU student, including freshmen, through audition. Many of these ensembles also provide scholarship opportunities for participating students. We believe in the importance and cultivation of character. The arts are not an industry only concerned with skill, but with character. 
Consideration of others, humility, hard work, and discipline are only a few of the many character attributes that are necessary to sustain a career in the field. Our professors will work with you, not only on your coursework, but on all those character traits that will help you thrive as a Christian, citizen, and artist. Lastly, we believe in social change through service and leadership. The arts are a powerful force in our culture, and our students are trained to not only perform works that speak to social change, but to live out that change through service. Our drama outreach program, consisting of our ministry team in character and our improv troupe, The Agency, has performed in churches, schools, camps, and juvenile detention centers. Students are encouraged to participate in choir tours overseas and New York theater showcases, not only to perform, but to recognize the need across the country and around the world. Our performances do not end at the curtain call, but we carry the message out of the stage doors and into the world, living out the messages that we bring to the stage. MBU Timeline, our multimedia online journalism site and news broadcast, embraces the core value of social change through service and leadership by focusing on treating the least among us as equals, a defining quality of any great journalist. Students follow Jesus' example in treating people with respect and asking two ethical questions before proceeding with any story. Who will this hurt and who will this help? Students are encouraged to take leadership opportunities regularly in the fine arts division. Our music majors can be selected to conduct pieces in the choral department throughout the year, including conducting movements of masterworks such as Rudder's Gloria, Dan Forrest's Jubilate Deo, and Handel's Messiah. The theater department season includes a student-produced work each year, directed, designed, and acted by our students with guidance from a faculty member. The National Association for Music Education and the Speech and Theater Association of Missouri chapters at MBU give students officer roles that allow them to lead their fellow classmates through meetings, speaker selections, and conference attendance. MBU Timeline offers editorial positions to students, enabling them to steer the direction of the site and news covered. And every student is encouraged to take on a daily servant leadership role asking themselves how they can help each other and their program excel and leave a legacy for the students that will come after them. If you are looking for a university experience where you are viewed as a whole person, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and you are not afraid of the hard work of developing your craft and character, MBU Fine Arts is an excellent choice for you. We would love to have you come on campus for our MBU Theater Experience October 9th and for our Fine Arts Program auditions on November 14th. Larger scholarships are available to those who audition before January 1st, so don't wait. And of course, any of our faculty would love to talk with you more about our individual programs. Email the Fine Arts Administrative Assistant, Sarah Dickey, at sarah.dickey at mobap.edu for more information about our upcoming events and auditions or to be connected with a faculty member in your area of study. Thank you for your interest in MBU. I hope to meet you in person soon. Have a great evening. Okay, yeah, so that was uh, Professor Casey Cox. Um, she's always so inspiring to hear from. Um, I did want to point out all of the programs of study uh, that are available. Um, we have broadcast media, communication studies, journalism, and public relations. Those are the more media related options. Um, then there's music education, speech and theater education, musical theater, and just speech and theater, music, music performance, worship, leadership, commercial voice, music with elective studies in business, worship arts technology, and then minors in worship and dance. Next slide, please. Um, as Casey mentioned in her video, uh, we have upcoming audition dates for uh, music and theater majors. Um, so mark your calendar if you are interested. We have uh, November 14th, um, and on that day, you can audition to be part of the music, um, musical theater, 
and our theater programs. Um, you can also audition to be part of our ensembles, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, in a few minutes. And then Saturday, February 6th, um, and then February 15th, we will have auditions for both the programs as well as our ministry groups. Um, next slide, please. Um, I don't have very much time this evening to talk about scholarships, but we do look at ACT and GPA. Um, so we're going to go ahead and skip to the next one just for the sake of time, but I would love to talk more thoroughly about the logistics of our merit scholarships in the future. Um, but I do want to just mention, I know uh, Professor Cox mentioned a lot of our different ensembles and things like that, but we do have choirs, we have jazz band and concert band, we have in character, that's the one she mentioned that they go and um, they'll do little skits at uh, high schools and juvenile centers and just kind of spread good news through uh, drama. We have Spirit Wing and Abide, which are ministry groups that are basically like worship bands um, that will go and perform at events and churches, etc. We have a gospel choir. They're wonderful. They're featured at the bottom left. Um, and then we have a picture of someone from our chapel band here, um, bottom middle. We have a chapel band that leads music for chapel every Thursday. Um, and then you can see um, some pictures from our bands as well. Next slide. So what are your next steps? As uh, Professor Cox mentioned, you can contact Sarah, her email is here again. Um, schedule a visit, come and see our campus, we would love to have you. Um, and then once you apply, you will hear from a counselor, uh, someone like me, and then we will follow up and give you any information that you seek from us. We're just happy to work with you and help you through the process. So thank you guys so much and I hope to talk to you soon. Next we will have Brooke from SEMO. Thank you, Mary Kate. Um, my name is Brooke Lockhart. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Southeast Missouri State University. Um, I've been with the university for seven years and um, this is a first for us um, meeting with you virtually. We would much rather be face to face. So we're very excited that you've chosen to spend just a little bit of time with us this evening. Uh, next slide, please. So Southeast Missouri State University is a mid-sized regional public university located in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, uh, which is just two hours south of St. Louis. We have around 10,000 students and we offer coursework at three locations in addition to our main campus here in Cape. We have a location in Sykeston, Missouri, in Kennett, Missouri, and then we also offer coursework on the campus of Three Rivers College in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Um, we do have over 200 undergraduate and graduate majors, and each one of our majors offers internship and study abroad opportunities. Uh, we do have over 70 destinations worldwide where you can choose to study abroad, and getting involved on campus is really easy because we have over 200 student clubs and organizations. So whether you want to be involved academically or more for leisure, we have all different types um, of organizations that you can join. We are a Division I athletic institution and we have 15 Division I NCAA teams. And last year we were um, conference champions, Ohio Valley conference champions in five sports. So we had a really strong um, athletic season last year. Uh, we have been test optional since 2019 and we were one of the first schools in the state to provide test optional opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. So the Holland College of Arts and Media is where we host all of our fine arts. Um, it is made up of four academic departments. So we have the Department of Art and Design, the Department of Mass Media, the Department of Music, and the Janine Larson Dobbins Conservatory of Theater and Dance. Our River Campus 
um, is what we call it. And it is the only campus in the state of Missouri that is entirely dedicated to the arts. And we are also the only university to be nationally accredited in all four areas. And we'll talk a little bit about those um, as we move through. Um, the River Campus does have its own dormitory and dining facility. And the dorms include a fitness center and then there are practice rooms on each floor. And we also have the Crisp Museum located at the River Campus, and that houses uh, Southeast Missouri history. It's free to visit, and they do host a lot of activities and events there during the year. Um, what's really nice about our River Campus is that you don't have to be a major within that college to participate. So you can participate in the music ensembles, dance classes, art classes, and any student is welcome to use the facilities at the River Campus. Next slide, please. So art and design. So on this slide, I have listed the different areas that we have. So we do have our BFA, which um, Jenny talked about earlier, the difference between some of these degrees. Um, but we offer a BFA in digital arts, graphic design, printmaking, painting, sculpture, ceramics. And then we have just a BA in art. We have the Bachelor of Science and Education for Art Education. Um, and then we have a commercial multimedia bachelor's degree and that's really kind of um, photography falls under that. That's probably the most common thing that students would associate that with. Um, we do have um, a facility for our students called Catapult Creative House. And within Catapult, there is a gallery, there are student studios, there is a student pop-up shop where you can actually um, sell anything that you've created. So there's artwork, there's jewelry, there's t-shirts, there's shoes, anything that our students have made, they can actually sell in that shop. Um, they do have the Catapult Press there. Um, they have a visiting artist program, which is really cool. Um, so that's where we have artists um, from all over that will come once a month and do a, basically speak, do a little series for, for everyone and it's free. Um, there is a student artist of the month and they have an interior design center. So um, we have our students have access to Catapult 24 seven with a key card, which is really nice. So um, really they can go anytime, day or night during the semester. And that even includes holidays uh, to be able to use those spaces. Um, our interior design students, um, they get to work with real clients through a business called Catapult Interior. So it's actually a company that the university has um, and clients within the commu community can actually hire them um, for their interior design needs. This is honestly the best experience that they can have um, because that gets them kind of working in the field and, and really completing in, um, interior design projects for real clients. Um, you can see some of the art and design careers that we have. There's graphic designer, illustrator, art teacher, painter, sculptor, um, interior designer, photographer, photography studio manager. There's a lot um, of job opportunities within this field. And for our art pro uh, programs, there is no portfolio needed for admission. Um, you just have to be admitted into the university and that's all that you need to do. Next slide, please. So our um, next slide is music. Um, you can see the different degrees that we have. So we have um, the Bachelor of Arts in Music. We have a Bachelor of Music Education in both instrumental and vocal options. We have a Bachelor of Music in Composition, Vocal, and Instrumental Performance. Um, we do have um, the NASM and CAEP accreditations. And so those are those national accreditations that we were that I was, uh, spoke of earlier. Um, and some of the facilities that we have there, we have the Bedell Concert Hall and the Shuck Recital Hall. The Bedell Concert Hall is a 150,000 square foot facility that seats 950 people. And it's engineered for incredible acoustics. It's a really awesome space to visit and to be able to perform in. And then the Shuck uh, Recital Hall is located in in um, the old chapel of the seminary building. So our river campus was actually built um, on a location where this, there used to be a seminary there. Um, and they were actually able to use some of the brick um, and stuff from the 
old seminary as they were building the river campus. Um, the Shuck Recital Hall does seat 200 people, and we were able to preserve all of the original stained glass windows. So that's another really um, beautiful facility that they can um, sing and perform in. There are um, 360 degree views of these venues on our website. Um, so you can visit cmo.edu slash music to actually see those places. 95% um, of our um, music education majors have a job placement rate as soon as they graduate from uh, college. And there are a lot of different ensemble opportunities. So like I had mentioned before, you don't have to be a major to participate in any of these. So we have athletic bands. So that's going to be our pet band, our marching band. Um, we've got concert band, jazz band, there's percussion, symphony, um, guitar, choral ensemble, just a lot of opportunities. Um, our symphony students actually get to go um, study abroad in Italy and China, um, as well as taking trips within the US like um, Washington DC. Uh, we do offer music major days. And so during a music major day, you can choose to formally audition into one of our music programs, um, or you can just attend the day without auditioning. Uh, for those who wish to audition, you need a list of all of the music ensembles that you've performed, um, a list of all the work you've performed solo in either contests or ensemble festivals, and then two references. And we do require auditions to get into the music program and also to receive some of those um, scholarships that we have for our fine arts. Um, again, you can visit stemo.edu slash music. All of our audition information is on our website. Next slide, please. So next we're going to talk about the Conservatory of Theater and Dance. So we do offer the BFA in acting, BFA in design and technology, musical theater, um, and then we have a BA and a BFA in dance. Um, our conservatory is the largest in the state of Missouri, um, and we were named the best theater program in the state by On Stage. We also rank in the top 30 musical theater programs in the nation. Um, we have the NAST accreditation, which is that national accreditation again. Um, we do produce over 100 events annually in the theater department. Um, you can see some of our recent productions have been Nine to Five, Cinderella, Shrek, Heathers and Bring It On. Um, Bring It On, we were actually able to stream. So that was really cool um, that we were able to stream that um, just the past month. Um, and then our students get to, get to participate in opportunities outside of the classroom, like the New York and Los Angeles Showcase, where they get to work and learn, learn alongside casting directors and agents. Um, they get to participate in the Fault Line Film Festival, where they make films and they compete against others from across the country. Um, An American Hero um, is um, a, a musical theater production that was written and produced by a SEMO student and the chairperson. Um, I actually had the honor of watching it performed off Broadway at the New York Music Festival two years ago, and they actually won Best Production. Um, and we had freshmen all the way through seniors that were performing in this production. So it was, it was a phenomenal opportunity. I mean, how many freshmen in college can say that they've performed off Broadway in New York? It was amazing. Um, we are one of two NASD accredited programs. So that's the National Accreditation for Dance. Um, and we offer dance training in modern ballet and jazz. We do also offer professional guest dancers um, that are able to lead and participate in our classes. Auditions are required for both theater and dance. Um, so both of those programs, you basically fill out the registration form, you choose your audition date, and then Right now, due to COVID, the auditions are actually virtual or by video, um, but traditionally they are conducted face-to-face. Um, -face. The dance audition does consist of a two-hour dance masterclass. You perform a solo and then you interview with faculty. Um, all of the audition information uh, for both theater and dance can be found online at cmo.edu slash theater and dance. Next slide, please. So the last one that we're going to talk about is the Department of Mass Media. So we offer advertising, multimedia journalism, public relations, and TV and film. We are one of only two programs in Missouri to have the ACE JMC accreditation. 
Um, and a 2018 SEMO alumna received the Missouri Press Association Outstanding Young Journalist Award for 2020. Our former chair, Dr. Pam Perry, was named the 2020 winner of the Best Guest Award from the Association for Education in Journalism and Mass Communication. That podcast was the top rated episode with over 400 downloads. We also have um, a facility called the Russ Center for Media, which is located on Media Row, and it opened in 2016. The Russ Center for Media has over 13,000 square feet of space. The main floor has a flexible learning space and a production studio along with a green room. And then the lower level has our student newspaper, um, The Arrow. Um, it also has SE Creative, which is our student advertising firm. So just like our interior design students have their own company, um, our advertising students have their own firm as well. And then Riverfront PR, which is our student public relations firm. So our PR, PR students have their own firm also. And all of those, they get to work with real clients. Um, year after year, The Arrow, which is our student um, newspaper, takes home um, multiple awards, and it actually has been around for over 100 years. It's one of the longest standing student run newspapers in the country. Um, and then there are a lot of involvement opportunities. So um, in addition to like The Arrow and SE Creative, um, you've got the Media Communication Association International, the National Association of Black Journalists, National Broadcasting Society, um, Public Relations Student Society of America, just a lot of ways that our students are involved. Next slide, please. So scholarships um, at Southeast, we do have a Copper Dome scholarship program. And new for fall 2021, we've expanded our test optional scholarship offerings. And we don't really have a lot of time left, much like um, Mary Kate to really go in depth. But you can see on this slide that um, based on your test score, or if you have no score, you can see where you can match it up with your GPA um, to see what you would be eligible for in terms of one of our Copper Dome scholarships. We do also offer a Visual and Performing Arts Award, and students are considered for those awards at the time that they audition. Um, if you have questions about our scholarship program, definitely get in contact, um, but we will move on to the next and last slide. Um, so the very last slide that I have is how to apply. So our application is um, located online, cmo.edu slash apply. We have no application fee for domestic students and you actually self-report your academic record. So um, when you're filling it out, you tell us what your high school GPA and test scores are and we use that information to make an admission decision immediately. We are test optional with a 2.75 cumulative GPA. So for those who have not been able to test um, due to COVID, that's okay. You can still get admitted in other ways. Um, and if you're transferring, you just need to send your official transcripts um, along with your application. We are also on the Common app, so if you're filling out for multiple schools, you'll find us on there as well. Um, and then we do encourage you to visit us. So we are offering in-person campus tours Monday through Saturday, and we will be hosting fall visit days on October 2nd, October 23rd, and October 21st. Fourth, um, you can go to cmo.edu slash visit to register for a personal tour or one of our upcoming fall visit days. And we definitely hope to see you soon. And that is all that I have. Excellent. Um, we had one question that was answered about CMO's um, ACT scores. It is test optional. And then um, somebody's asking if there's a demand for upright string bass players. Um, I can't give you a definitive like answer, but I believe there is. <laughs> I think they're, um, they're harder to come by and there are scholarships available for, for that. Um, I'm sure at, at CMO and at MBU if I can speak for both of us. That might be all we have time for. Um, let's see. Any other questions? 
it looks like there's a question for SEMO. If we weren't to make it with our auditions into the SEMO theater program, could we still get involved in another way? Yes. So um, our theater program also has, um, you can, anyone actually can try out. We actually have even had staff members here that used to do theater way back in the day that will um, still audition um, to participate in any of our productions. So yes, you could definitely still um, get involved. I love that. Does Simo have an orchestra? I know that we have different groups, but I don't know that we have an orchestra that you um, would audition to get into, um, but that's definitely information that we could follow up. So we will get a list of these questions. And if you're, I don't know if you're specifically asking about SEMO, but I'm happy to um, follow up um, after, because I think we're out of time. Yes, I just want to um, jump on and say thank you so much to our panelists tonight for giving us these overviews of their art programs. Um, for those of you that are leaving the meeting, just know you'll get a quick survey. We'd love your feedback. Um, and again, we'd love for you to consider and, and look at the other sessions that you have the opportunity to sign up for. Um, and you can always check back for a recording of this session at the um, moacac.org website. Thank you, everybody. Great job.